What is up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Lucid Daily. And yes, I am finally back from my sabbatical. I did take about two or three weeks just to kind of get all of my life together. And I'm extremely excited to let you guys know where things are going. Things are going fantastic in my life personally, but we are on a trajectory that is going to be extremely exciting. Now, in this video, we're going to talk a little bit why, a little bit about why I like the Lucid Sapphire and exactly why I don't like the Lucid Sapphire. So let's go ahead and dive into it. Um, today's just going to be a, a quick video just to jump back into things. I had to get disciplined. Be like, all right, we've got to get back to videos today no matter what. So tomorrow, I promise I will do a lot more prep for a video. We'll talk about the market action. We'll talk about how I'm trading Lucid. I have a couple of interesting ideas that I'll talk about. But nonetheless, we're going to go ahead and talk about the Lucid Sapphire. That's kind of like what's getting the headlines this weekend. Um, if you didn't already know, which if you didn't, um, I'd be kind of surprised. Lucid is now introducing basically the super summed up version of it is Lucid's version of the plaid. And the, I think the color is actually really cool. I think the blood, the blue, not the blood, the blue really stands out. Um, I believe it's a trimotor. I don't know if that's officially been um, decided yet, but let's go ahead and look at trimotor. Um, I don't think they specifically, I don't know if they specifically said that it was a trimotor, but I, I, we assume that with all the videos and everybody of like holding up the threes, we assume that it's a trimotor. We have some broad details, but we don't have anything like concrete again you can see some pictures the color looks phenomenal we've seen it on the test track but we haven't really had any like first-hand experiences of it yet so nonetheless the car the car looks phenomenal and it sounds like it's going to be an excellent vehicle and the i i told my i, I titled this video why i kind of hate it now i'm gonna i feel like that's a pretty strong title but i'm gonna go ahead and express um, an opposing opinion and this is a, this is an opinion as an investor not necessarily as somebody that really likes the cars as somebody that drove the dream edition the car is absolutely incredible and you see some of their harshest critics like me kevin said the company different story but the car is an absolute piece of artistic machinery that just des that deserves to be put in the museum and i don't think that that was a very disputed fact some people may or may not like the style but the cars are absolutely phenomenal and i've said it from day one if you invest into lucid you're investing over in a quality car, not a quantity amount of cars. Now, I guess I, I'm kind of getting a taste of my own medicine by saying that. But the reason that I'm not in love with Lucid Sapphire is because it is going to start production if we are in August, September, May, June, July. Uh, oh, wait, August, September. Wow. Sorry, it's been a long day. August, September, October, November, December, January. So in five, six months, um, we, the, the last we heard was it was start production and let me pull it up so you guys can see it um it says will be delivered next year so at some point in 2023 we do know that they will be producing the lucid sapphire now here's the reason why i don't necessarily love it is because we already have five lines of cars six if you include the gravity you have the dream edition you have the touring you have the you have the grand touring you have the touring you have the air pure and i guess the air the grand touring performance so that's five different lines of cars and i don't know if i counted the gravity in there but if you include the gravity six lines of cars now we already know that when lucid was going to the production of the air the i can't remember which model it was specifically but they had to shut down the whole factory for about two weeks so my frustration is i would rather have us double down and focus all of our efforts like having Peter Rollinson continue to be in the factory this weekend rather than showing off the Lucid Sapphire that's not going to be in production for a year. I, I think it, it may sound, sound short-sighted, but I really am to the point where production is so critically important. And here we are trying to kind of chase Tesla a little bit, which in my opinion, Lucid kind of lost the plot with that, how they're trying to one-up Tesla with the plaid. Now, is the car going to be phenomenal? There's no doubt about it. Will the car have great margins? Absolutely. The car, was the car will have absolutely phenomenal margins in terms of how much they can make on it. But they said they're only going to make a limited number. Now, I don't know if that's some sort of sales tactic or if they're only going to make a couple hundred, a couple thousand. I have no idea. Nonetheless, it is. It, it did leave a little frustration for me because I know that that's going to take a lot of attention off of production and getting that whole line ready to go we know that there's a lot of already issues with production, with logistics, and we're adding a sixth car on top of that. And that's actually going to come before the gravity. So I wonder if that's going to push the gravity back at all. Like, I wonder if they're going to shift that in priority of the air pure. That was just my only thing. Again, do I think the car is going to, the actual car is going to be phenomenal? Yes. The only thing that really concerned me is, like I've said, how is it going to affect production? Is it going to slow things down just because we wanted to kind of reach Tesla with the Plaid model? Like... Tesla was producing cars for five to seven years before they came out with the Plaid. 
Um, it, probably even more than that. Uh, I think they started in 2013, so almost 10 years before they came out, uh, like eight, eight, nine years before they came out with the Plaid. So again, I, I, I don't like comparing Lucid and Tesla just because I feel like they are, you can compare them when it comes to eras, but you don't necessarily want to compare them year to date. And I feel like Lucid was chasing after that Plaid model, wanting to just one up Elon Musk, which I mean, how much R&D went into that? How much capital expenditure went into that? How much of Peter Rollinson's time was spent overseeing that instead of the factory? These are just kind of the questions. It's like, why are we focused on a whole totally separate car rather than getting this production lineup? Because we missed earnings bad. And Lucid's now trading at $16 a share. Um, let me pull that up for you guys really quick. Uh, let me just do this so that we can see it. We'll go over the stock. I wasn't planning on doing this, but I think it's important. Lucid's trading for $16.10 a share. And they have been down 13% in the last five days, 14% the last month, and 32% the last six months. Whereas if you take, like if they're trying to chase, trying to chase Tesla, they've definitely been left behind in terms of, uh, of a rally. I mean, over the past month, Lucid Tesla's up 8%, last month up, up six, thir- 13%. So that was the biggest thing to me is it's like, wow, like we have so much more that we could focus on, so much more big announcements. Like, oh, like we are doubling down, like things are going better than expected in the factory. Again, maybe this didn't take all that time and all that money and you guys are going to bash me in the comments. But as an investor, that was something that I was considering is like, I don't think that that's going to necessarily change. Even if it's like 5,000 units, we're going to have to get a production line up and going for a line of 5,000 units that we already know that these cars are going to be perfect. Like they have to be perfect for Peter Rollinson to ship them. And if they aren't perfect, then that's going to cause delays. So I would have rather spent the time, resources, and energy perfecting the assembly line that we already had that's having issues and logistics problems. Um, I don't know. That was just kind of my thoughts. And I know that that's kind of brash and I'm probably going to get a lot of hate for this. But again, I'm, I'm still holding my Lucid shares. I haven't sold them. I have a couple of ideas that, that, are, that may be some strategic plays that I'll talk to you guys about this week. Um, but yeah, it, it was kind of frustrating as a shareholder to kind of sit back and be like, why are we promoting this new car? Like Peter Rollinson just got like a couple hundred million dollar check for stock compensation and the stock set like near bottoms. So that was that was kind of frustrating as an investor. It's like, come on, like even if like I get this car is going to be cool, but I feel like, I feel like Peter Rollinson kind of just wants to one up Elon, which kind of bothered me a little bit. Um, and Elon had already been producing cars for like eight to nine years and Lucid's in their like third quarter of production. So I don't know. I could be totally wrong and I would be happy to be wrong. I just kind of want to share my opinion because I thought it was a unique opinion and I haven't heard anybody talk about it yet. And I'm here to tell you guys the good, the bad, the ugly. And I just, I am back for my sabbatical now. So I appreciate you guys' support and you guys' concerns while I was gone. I am done traveling um, over during the week. So I will be in the office recording videos for you guys on this channel and my main channel. If you haven't yet, consider subscribing if you want my, my thoughts on Lucid in the daily market, exactly what's going on, what I think about the news, why. I, like I'll tell you guys the good, the bad, and the ugly. I'm not here just to pump up a stock and do absolutely nothing. Um, I'm, I believe that if you're investing into a company, you should absolutely be their harshest critic. Um, and if you are, then you'll be able to see the holes in the company and things that the company can improve on. And when the company improves upon those things, you're like, oh, wow, like, look, like these things I had issues are, are getting better. So take it with what you may. I'd love to hear you guys' thoughts down in the comments. Again, this isn't like I'm holding my shares. I'm not like shorting or anything. That'd be kind of ridiculous, um, especially when they're already so low. But I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your evening. Let me know what you think down in the comments. And I'm happy to be back. Thanks for watching.